Tonight, we're taking you inside one of the major labs testing for COVID-19. We'll look at how the focus on testing is starting to change from patients with symptoms to testing the staff and residents of entire care homes. Our science correspondent, David Gregory Kumar, has been in Coventry following the test from swab to result. A warning that his report starts with pictures of a nasal swab, which you might find a little unpleasant. Okay, can you head back a little bit for me? This is the reality of testing for COVID-19. Haley has volunteered to show us what a nasal swab really looks like. It should be uncomfortable. Um, uh, I think that um, uh, having a swab put up your nose or down your throat is not normally a comfortable situation. Um, uh, so you know you've got it right if it is uncomfortable. Once swabs are taken from both nostrils and the back of the throat, well then the samples are taken to a brand new COVID lab here at University Hospital in Coventry. This is a new COVID lab that we've set up in the last um, four weeks um, to deal specifically with testing for COVID-19. First, all the samples are cleaned because you don't want contamination to ruin the result of the test. Next door, sample swabs are treated and the coronavirus itself is killed. You can still test for it, but there's no chance of it infecting the staff here. And many of them are volunteers. The call was made to the universities, uh, the, the local universities, and we had a fantastic response. We had more than 100 volunteers that were willing to come and help. And now the lab who runs 24 uh, hours, seven days a week, you can test for the virus in a number of different ways, but this route allows them to process a large number of samples in about eight hours and get a final result about 12 hours after the swabs were taken. And testing is evolving all the time. So initially, the samples coming through the lab would have predominantly come from patients who presented at the hospitals with symptoms of the virus. But increasingly, you're gonna see samples coming in from places like residential care homes in the wider community. There's more than simple testing going on in this lab. They're also studying the genetics of every sample and building up a picture of the variations we're seeing in the virus itself. Variations that might partly explain why some people have different symptoms to others. We do have evidence that it, it, it is different. In different countries, they report different types of viruses that they, they, they want around. But even minute changes on the virus, on the virus sequence, might be important for the way that people respond to the, to, to the, the virus. And then this is the final stage. In this case, a positive result. That red line means this patient has the coronavirus. And David joins me now with more on this. It's fascinating, this, David. How many tests can they get through uh, in, a, in a day at this lab? So they reckon about 400 to 450, which is pretty good going, to be honest. Um, from start to finish, once the samples get to the lab, the chemistry and everything takes about eight hours to process the samples and get that final result, that red line we saw. Um, but that said, there are faster tests, but they can only handle uh, fewer samples. So it's a bit of a compromise. And they have a lot of volunteers there. So that's why they can run the lab sort of 24 hours, uh, seven days a week. Yeah, volunteers, students from the University of Warwick. Uh, and so that's why they think this is a good compromise. And it's changing the samples they're analysing. So as I said, initially it was people who come to hospital with symptoms. From next week, we think we're going to see teams actually going into places like care homes, testing all the staff, testing all the residents in one go, and then all those samples samples will come to the lab for processing. But the usual normal kind of routine work is continuing at the hospital alongside all this testing. Yeah, so the pathology lab is still open. They're still doing blood work. That's all still carrying on. And in fact, the hospitals seem to be sort of moving back to more normal day-to-day -day operations. So we're going to see the COVID-19 stuff sort of carrying on alongside, you know, the usual stuff we expect hospitals to do. And just finally, David, uh, what about the numbers, the latest uh, death rate in our region? So a bit of a caveat. Mondays are always quieter in terms of data gathering, but the NHS say 23 people uh, are now new reported deaths in Midlands hospitals. Uh, that, however, is one of the lowest Monday figures we've seen for a while. But that said, we do expect Tuesday to be a bit a bit higher. Mm. So we're moving in the right direction, but probably an increase tomorrow, I'm okay. afraid. A little bit of cautious optimism, maybe. David, thank you.